In the vast silence of the lunar landscape, two American companies recently attempted what only superpowers had achieved before. Soft landing on the moon's challenging surface. Their journey could not have ended more differently. Intuitive Machines lander rests sideways in a crater. Its mission cut dramatically short, while Firefly Aerospace's Blue Ghost stands proudly upright, continuously sending data back to Earth as you watch this video. This isn't just a tale of success and failure. It's a masterclass in the razor-thin margins between triumph and disappointment in the most unforgiving environments humans have ever tried to reach. Welcome to Physics Space. Today we are diving into the new space race, where private companies compete on their lunar frontiers and the stakes could not have been higher. In 2018, NASA launched an ambitious $2.6 billion initiative called Commercial Lunar Payload Service, CLIPS for short. The concept was revolutionary. Instead of NASA building and operating its own lunar landers at enormous cost, private companies would compete to deliver scientific instruments to the moon, spurring innovation while reducing cost. Both Intuitive Machines and Firefly Aerospace earned their places in this program, securing contracts worth $100 million each. Both companies launched their respective missions aboard SpaceX Falcon 9 rockets. Both navigated the complex 240,000 mile journey to lunar orbit. Yet, when the moment of truth arrived, the heart-stopping final descent to the lunar surface, their paths dramatically diverged. Houston-based Intuitive Machines made history in February 2024, when their Odysseus lander became the first US spacecraft to touch the lunar surface since Apollo. Though Odysseus landed, it didn't land well, tipped on its side after touchdown. Despite this setback, the team extracted valuable data and declared the mission a qualified success. Fast forward to early 2025, and Intuitive Machines was ready for redemption with their second mission. Athena launched on February 26th, carrying an ambitious payload, NASA's Prime One drill, designed to search for water ice, multiple advanced sensors, and even experimental 4G network equipment. The mission target, the challenging highlands of Mons Mouton, near the lunar South Pole, an area of extraordinary scientific interest but treacherous terrain. Athena's journey started flawlessly. The spacecraft separated perfectly from its Falcon 9 upper stage, executed precise trajectory corrections, and entered lunar orbit on March 3rd. But as Athena began its power descent on March 6th, critical problems emerged. At an altitude of approximately 15 kilometers, the lander's enormous navigation system began reporting conflicting data. The primary laser detection and ranging system, LiDAR, essentially a laser altimeter designed to provide precise distance measurements, was delivering unreliable readings. This forced the guidance computer to rely on its secondary navigation Doppler LiDAR system, which was not fully calibrated for the challenging lighting conditions near the lunar south pole. In the final moments of descent, from approximately 100 meters altitude, Athena's thrusters began firing inconsistently, as the guidance system attempted to compensate for the erroneous navigation data. The spacecraft began drifting laterally, moving approximately 820 feet from its targeted landing site and ultimately setting down in a small crater at an excessive velocity. The impact was hard enough that one of Athena's landing legs collapsed, causing the $118 million spacecraft to tip on its side. In this orientation, Athena's solar arrays could not capture sufficient sunlight to maintain power. Though mission controllers heroically activated several scientific instruments during the lander's final hours of operation, including briefly deploying the Prime 1 drill, Athena's batteries were depleted within 10 hours of landing. The second mission had also ended in disappointment. 
While Intuitive Machines was making headlines with its dramatic near miss, Texas-based Firefly Aerospace was taking a different approach. Their Blue Coast Lander, named after a rare luminescent Firefly species, launched on January 15, 2025, began a 45-day journey to the moon. Blue Coast's design philosophy differed significantly from Intuitive Machines' approach. Standing 2 meters tall and weighing 250 kilograms at launch, Bluehost featured a broader, more stable base with four widely spaced legs. Its center of gravity was intentionally kept low to minimize stability during touchdown. Perhaps most critically, Bluehost carried multiple redundant navigation systems, including dual landing cameras, three separate laser range finders, and an advanced inertial measurement unit. This redundancy meant that if any single system failed, the spacecraft could still land safely using data from the remaining sensors. Firefly also took a more conservative approach to landing site selection. Instead of targeting the challenging lunar south pole region, Bluehost aimed for Mare Crisium, a vast lunar basin on the moon's near side. This region offered relatively flat terrain with good earth visibility for communications and consistent sunlight for power generation. Mare Crisium also lacked the magnetic anomalies that could interfere with sensitive scientific instruments. On March 2, 2025, after a textbook journey to lunar orbit, Blue Coast began its powered descent. The lander's descent profile was carefully calculated to minimize fuel consumption while maintaining precise control. From 20 km altitude, Blue Ghost fired its main engine to reduce velocity, then transitioned to a near vertical descent at 5 km. The spacecraft's cameras consistently scanned the surface autonomously identifying and avoiding potential hazards. At 100 meters altitude, Bluehost hovered briefly while its hazardous detection system confirmed a safe landing zone, then maintaining a steady 2 meters per second descent rate. The spacecraft gently touched down at precisely 3.35 am Eastern Time. Within 40 minutes, Blue Ghost transmitted its first image, a crystal clear view of the lunar surface with one leg visible in the frame. When we directly compared these missions, several critical differences emerged that determined their fate. Navigation system architecture. Intuitive machines relied heavily on an experimental laser altimeter system that was not fully validated for lunar conditions. When this primary system delivered inconsistent data, the backup systems were not robust enough to compensate. Firefly, by contrast, implemented triple redundancy in their navigation systems. Even when one foot sensor failed to register lunar contact correctly, an issue they openly acknowledged, the overall landing succeeded because multiple backup systems were in place. Landing Site Selection Intuitive machines chose an extraordinarily challenging landing zone near the lunar south pole. This region's rugged terrain, dramatically varying topography and challenging lighting conditions magnified any navigation errors. Firefly's selection of Mare Crisium provided a much more forgiving environment for their first landing attempt. Mechanical Design Philosophy The recurring tipping issue with Intuitive Machine's lander suggests fundamental stability problem in their physical design. Athena's lander profile with a high center of gravity made it inherently vulnerable to tipping when landing on uneven terrain or with residual horizontal velocity. Bluehost's wider stance and lower center of gravity provided crucial stability margin during the landing phase. Mission Complexity Management Intuitive machines attempted to accomplish multiple groundbreaking objectives simultaneously. Landing near the challenging South Pole, operating sophisticated drilling equipment, and testing experimental communication systems. This complexity increased mission risk. Firefly took a more incremental approach focusing primarily on achieving a stable landing with a more straightforward scientific payload. Testing and Simulations 
Industry insiders reported that Firefly conducted over 15,000 hours of landing simulations before launch, testing their guidance software against countless failure scenarios. While intuitive machines, simple human error with laser altimeter configuration suggests potential gaps in their testing protocol. So what do we learn from this? These contrasting missions offer invaluable guidance for future commercial lunar endeavors. Forgive me, I'll be a little unforgiving today. Number one, redundancy is non-negotiable. In the unforgiving lunar environment, single point failures can doom otherwise well-executed missions. Firefly's multiple backup systems proved essential when one sensor failed during landing. Future missions must build in similar redundancy for all critical systems. Number two, progress risk management. Firefly's approach of tackling one major challenge at a time, focusing first on achieving a stable landing before attempting more. Future missions might benefit from similar incremental approaches rather than attempting multiple firsts simultaneously. Number three, conservative margins. Blue Coast's wider landing gear stands, more powerful descent and conservative Fuel margins provided crucial safety buffers. In lunar missions, designing with a generous safety margin can mean the difference between success and failures. Site selection strategy. The stark contrast between intuitive machines challenging South Pole target and Firefly's more accessible Mare Crisium landing highlights the importance of strategic site selection, especially for early missions. Companies might consider a graduated approach to landing site difficulty as they build experience. Number five, comprehensive testing protocols. The software configuration error that compromised Intuitive Machine's navigation system highlights the critical importance of exhaustive testing under realistic conditions. Future missions will benefit from more rigorous verification of all flight systems. Despite Intuitive Machine's setback, the future of commercial lunar exploration remains extraordinarily bright. Intuitive Machines has additional CLPS missions scheduled, with valuable lessons from Audacious and Athena informing their designs. Their ambition and willingness to attempt challenging landings will ultimately advance lunar exploration capabilities. Firefly's Bluehost success demonstrate that private companies can indeed master the immense challenge of lunar landings as Bluehost continues its planned 14-day mission, drilling into lunar soil, measuring subsurface temperatures, and even capturing images of a lunar eclipse from the moon's surface. It's writing a new chapter in commercial space exploration. These early commercial lunar missions, both the successful ones and those that fall short, are paving the way for a sustained human presence on the moon. Each attempt, each failure, and each triumph brings us closure to the day when lunar missions become routine rather than exceptional. In the words often attributed to space pioneers, space is hard. But as these missions show, with persistence, learning, and innovation, even the hardest challenges become solvable. The moon, our closest celestial neighbor, is finally within commercial reach opening a new frontier for science, exploration, and human spirit of adventure.